So the first thing we do with a passage is locate it. Okay, so Romeo is married. If I'm doing it, can you do it? No one knows. None of his friends know. Why is Tybalt so angry, Samiha? Why is Tybalt so angry? Like, what, what is it earlier in the play that he did that got him so enraged? Yeah, it was at the party. And his father, Father Capulet said, let it be. And remember the prince's warning. If there's another fight, there's going to be uh, death. Now, they ignore all of these signs. Tybalt's a proper hard guy. He's going around looking for him. He finds him. Mercutio and him are kind of bantering. Tybalt's like, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to him. Now, I edited this scene just to look at this moment. Romeo, the hate I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Now, Victorian gentlemen had a different notion of reputation. Elizabethan men were probably like men in this school. If you take, like, if, you, if someone insults you or your mom or whatever, and then all your friends are like, are you going to take that? Are you going to take that? It's a reputational thing. Oh, God. It's a reputational thing. Tybalt disrespects him. You're a villain. You're evil. You're my enemy. You have no honor. So look, no honor. Uh, 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 obviously bad, maybe even evil. And remember, no one's good or evil in this Capulet-Montague fight. It all depends on, we presume, or I presume Tybalt's bad, but Tybalt hates Romeo. Romeo crashed his house. Romeo, really funny. Tybalt, the reason I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I none, I'm not a villain. Therefore, farewell. I see thou knowest me not. He gives him his hand to shake. He says, you know what? I actually, I actually love you. And I'll tell you why. We know Tybalt is now Romeo's cousin. But he can't tell him that because that will put Juliet in jeopardy. So he says this very honest, but his friends see it potentially as sarcastic. Like, I'm not a villain. See you later. You don't know who I am. Tybalt is enraged. He begins with this. Boy, not man. Boy, lower. You're lower than... This shall not excuse the injuries thou hast done me. You, your apology... Your apologies don't make up for it. Your apologies don't make up for it. Therefore, let's dance. Pull out a sword. Now, in this culture, if the other guy doesn't pull out a sword, he's shameful. But you probably wouldn't kill another guy who's unarmed. That's, that's too low. I don't know what it's like in Tower Hamlets now. Sadly, from what I understand, you might knife someone from behind, jump them, hit them with a weapon if they are not armed. That's no honor. These people were men of honor. Romeo, whoa, 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 I protest. I never injured you. I love you. And one day you'll know why. One day you'll know the reason. So dear Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as my own. Your name, my name. Now, if you didn't know he was married, you'd think he's being sarcastic. He's not being sarcastic. But can you just turn to your partner? What are his friends thinking when he says this? Really quickly, just turn to your partner. What are his friends thinking? What's his, what are his friends thinking? Why nice? Good. Calm, dishonorable, vile. The big word for me is dishonorable. Dude, what's my guy doing here? You know, for me, Mercutio's thinking, oh, Romeo's not a good sword fighter. Oh my God, is my boy intimidated by that putz Tibble? Is he intimidated? 
Is he frightened? And you know what? He loves his friend, so he's gonna he's gonna fight it. He's gonna fight for him. But submission is giving up, and Mercutio just cannot have that at all. He refuses it. He will not have it. So he pulls out his sword, and he goes, "Will you walk? You want to come with me? Do you want to go? Should we do this? Should we do this? Will you walk? I love that verb. You want to play? You want to walk? You want to go somewhere?" Do it with me. Leave my guy alone. He's a poet. Dude likes girls. I'm the fighter. I'm the so I'm going to kill you right now, Tybalt. So, Tybalt's into it cuz Tybalt is also kind of more into fighting than anything else. He doesn't actually care about Romeo, does he? He cares about fighting. I am for you. I love that line. Again, it's a very classic way you could even speak today. I'm for you. Yes, I'm in. Let's do this. They fight. So here's the greatest echo. This scene echoes or AO2 structure links to the opening, right? The opening fight where they're not supposed to fight. And they get in that big fight. And here's what happens. The first fight, Benvolio broke up. So Romeo, and I find him ever so annoying here, Romeo goes, Hey, Benvolio, Benvolio, pull out your sword. Beat down their weapons. For shame, forbear this outrage. Tybalt, Mercutio, he reminds him, the prince has forbidden fighting. The prince has forbidden fighting. Stop, this is what I hear. Stop, Benvolio, get them to stop. Guys, stop. Guys, stop fighting. The, the prince said don't fight. Benvolio, it's very whiny. But here's the worst thing that happens. He stands up. He's putting himself in between the fight. Tybalt's sword comes down under his arm and stabs his best friend. Just like that. So just, then Mercutio gets stabbed. He leaves the stage and Romeo loses it. Romeo's so sad and he's, it's not here, but he basically thinks, Juliet's turned me into a woman. Oh my God, what's happened? This is ridiculous. And then comes Mercutio on stage. Now, this is an important thing in Shakespeare. This is all written in iambic pentameter. It's poetry. But when Mercutio is stabbed, it's in prose. And you should know, that means there's no poetry because he's lost it. His, his words are coming out. I am hurt. Wow. A plague. One of the most famous lines in the whole play. Now, plague is a disease. It was such a huge disease that in 1605, um, it was like 2,000 people a week in London were dying. The streets were filled with dead bodies. Plague was a thing that um, made your uh, skin bubble in black boils. It was, uh, it was a disease that consumed you and it was disgusting. That kind of swear is not a joke, but here's the best one, both. I don't give a crap about any of this anymore. Caplets, Montagues, all of you, go F yourself. Oh my God, you guys suck. Both of you suck. It's a huge realization. I am sped. Okay, he's gonna make jokes now, because that's what he does. Is he gone and hath nothing? He's so sad. He's like, did Tybalt not get wounded? Did Tybalt not get wounded? That really bothers him. He's like, what do you mean? I'm dead and that guy got nothing? He's so angry. Then he makes jokes. Oh, he calls it a scratch. Oh, it's an, but then he goes, it's enough. Enough to what? To die. Where's my page? Go villain. Go get a surgeon. Go get a doctor. See if they can fix me. Then he puts his hand in his weapon, uh, in, his, in his injury. And he goes, not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door, but tis enough. So it's not as deep as a well or as big as a church door, but it's enough. It's enough to kill me. He's making jokes, but he's dying. Twill serve. Ask for me tomorrow and you shall find me a grave man. He's making a joke, a bad one. It's a pun. Grave means where we die, uh, where the dead are kept, but it also means serious. 
So he says, if you, if you come, I'm, I'll be a grave man. I'll be serious. I'll be dead. Wicked image. I'm peppered. Sprinkle pepper on something, you'll see black dots. Peppered is an amazing image for being stabbed. Peppered. I am peppered. And he screams it. For me, it's a scream or a whisper of hatred. A plague on both your houses. Zounds is a Christian swear. And it means God's wounds. You're not supposed to say that. Just like when all of you say lies to one another. And then you say, say Allah. And all of you say Allah. And you all lie. That's blasphemous. That's not so good for you. But, you know. Religion is a malleable concept. Um, you shouldn't use language like that, but who cares? He's going to die. A dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat. To scratch a man to death, a braggart. What a show-off. A rogue, a thief, a villain that fights by the book of arithmetic. He's, he's a horrible fighter. He's fighting by the book. But here's the big line, guys. He looks right at Romeo and he says this. Why the devil, now he said devil, I would use the F word. Why the devil did you come between us? I was hurt under your arm. In other words, it is your fault. Now, this is a form of betrayal. It is a form of intimate betrayal. When your best friend who's supposed to have your back turns on you. I would like you to go back through this passage. If you haven't got five quotes, can you get it? Can you write them in your notes? How has Romeo's friendship changed since he's chosen Juliet? How has uh, his friendship